Hi everyone, and welcome to Sex with Paula with Dr. Cameron. I'm Dr. Cameron. I'm a sexual health doctor and educator. Welcome to part two of the hows and whys of getting an STI test today. If you are just starting a relationship, mm. or if you are already in a relationship, mm. you may want your partner or partners. That's a thing too. I don't judge. I encourage. Really. Fill your boots. You may want them all to get tested as well. Well, that can be pretty awkward, unpleasant, obtrusive, like the emotional equivalent of getting glass in your shoe. But please pay attention to the following scenario that I have devised to assist you. <laughs> This may be an unpleasant, awkward, or obtrusive conversation. But I think we should look into STI testing. I am concerned. Have you been unfaithful? I acknowledge your concern, but you don't need to worry. STIs, sexually transmitted infections, can lay dormant for years. Even though we've been in a long-term monogamous relationship or don't exhibit any obvious signs of STIs, it's possible for symptoms to surface unexpectedly or for an infection to cause long-term damage. This isn't about infidelity. It's about keeping you safe. No one loves me like you do. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, but you can't force someone to have an STI test, so stop. If your partner refuses to have a test, that's their choice. But you, yes you, I'm talking to you, and you, and you, and you, and even you, even you in the middle. You all deserve agency over your own health and your own bodies. <gasps> you're the only one who gets me. If you have more questions, be sure to email sexwithpaula at gmail.com and please subscribe to this channel and like it and leave comments in the little comments field below and get into your little internet arguments and have a great time with all of that. I will read it. I'm Dr. Cameron saying, till next time! Mwah! My <laughs> sign off is a kiss. <laughs> I'm Dr. Cameron and I say, let's roll.